Looking over the Australian COVID-19 data, I've been noticing some strange things. Now, there may be a perfectly good explanation for all this, but I can't say that I've seen one that I've found satisfactory. Okay, let's start with some population data. Australia has a population of almost 26 million people. Victoria makes up just over 25% of the Australian population, or 6.6 .6 million people. New South Wales makes up almost 32% of the Australian population, or 8.2 million people. Let's look a little closer, shall we? Now, let's look at what's been happening since the 1st of May 2022, starting with COVID cases. Ah, uh, just a little caveat. First, a caveat. It's fairly widely accepted that case numbers are likely underreported now due to testing at home and the fact that it's harder to get a PCR test. That aside, the case numbers in Victoria and New South Wales have been on a similar path up until the start of winter. This makes sense. Victoria is colder, and this winter has started out as the coldest since the 1940s, which you could assume would lead to more people spending time indoors. And we all know that the indoors is the high ground for COVID. I have the high ground! So based on these figures, you'd expect that the number of Victorians in hospital would be at least roughly the same as the number of people in New South Wales hospitals, right? Right? Well, <coughs> wrong. Throughout this period, the Victorian hospitalisation numbers have remained consistently low in comparison to New South Wales. Despite recording case numbers above those of New South Wales, Victoria appears to have had around one third of the number of hospitalisations. How is that even possible? Are the two states using a different definition of hospitalisation? I mean, maybe. Does Victoria have a different criteria for admitting a patient into hospital? I mean, maybe. Is it something else altogether? Who the hell knows? Whichever way you look at it, it's weird. So with less people admitted into hospital for COVID-19 in Victoria, you might assume that in general, cases must be less severe. In other words, we'd expect to see a lower death toll in Victoria, right? <coughs> Wrong again. Victoria has recorded more deaths than New South Wales, despite having significantly lower hospitalisation numbers. For further context, Victoria makes up 25.8% of the Australian population yet accounts for 37.1% of the country's COVID-19 deaths. New South Wales makes up 31.7% of the Australian population and accounts for 29.2% of the country's COVID-19 deaths. When it comes to people dying of COVID-19, Victoria would appear to be overrepresented. What the hell is going on? So what's going on? Why are the Victorian hospitalisation numbers so low in comparison to New South Wales, when the deaths and case numbers in Victoria are higher? I'm simply asking questions. Are there more people dying at home in Victoria, or are they dying in aged care homes in Victoria, without being admitted to hospital? It doesn't make sense. There must be a reason for it. It just hasn't been communicated what that reason is. One thing's for certain, with the further rolling back of COVID measures announced today by the Victorian government, and winter well and truly upon us, it's probably safe to assume things will only get worse before they get better. It can't get any worse, can it? Oh, almost definitely. 